It's a solid 100-point day up on the Nifty. It's the last hour uh, of trade. This is Closing Bell. We are coming to you live from the CNBC TV 18 Moti Rosewall Studios. I'm Prashant with me. My colleagues Reema and Mangalam is with us here today as well. Guys, afternoon. afternoon. Hi, afternoon. 100 points on the Nifty, 500 points on the mid-caps and banks are participating in full force. Oh, yeah, banks for participating in full form and uh, Mangalam, what are you watching? Well, I'm watching uh, what is at the bottom of your screen, the March SIP <coughs> inflow coming in at a record high for the second straight month above 19,000 crore rupees. So just a couple of years ago, we'd look at this number, talk about it having crossed a billion dollars, then it yeah. crossed a billion and a half, two billion dollars. Now we're inching towards 20,000 crores and that's reflected in the kind of mood that we have in the markets today. The mid-cap index doing extremely well, yeah. uh, 500 points out there. So the Nifty hits a century and the mid-cap index uh, almost a percent. No, absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, although the number month on month is higher, it's a new mm. fresh record high, although, I mean, it's a, not to nitpick, but it's slightly higher. It's a, uh, marginally higher as compared to the previous month, 19271, 19187. Uh, but it's higher. Uh, so that's basically, that's good. And of course, I mean, the, driv the flows have been driven by uh, uh, SIP, systematic investment plans, as opposed to discretionary lump sum investments. But that's been true for some time now uh, as well. We'll sort of uh, tell you more about where this money has gone in with Surubi in just a bit from now. But just a couple of points before we sort of uh, take all of this forward. Markets, of course, uh, continue to push higher. Yesterday was just a bit of a pause, and uh, today it's right back at uh, doing what it does best, uh, which is uh, gaining. Now, on the way up, uh, and these are uh, same levels that we put out in the morning, the upper end of the weekly Bollinger Bands are at about 22,955. I mean, practically about the 23,000 levels, but uh, that's the exact number. And uh, you know, the reversal... If you want to sort of, if you're trading, then you must have uh, sort of trailing reversal stops. And the closest is uh, now at about 22,600, 22,580 to be precise. Uh, PSUs are, uh, you know, PSUs all sold off a little bit yesterday. They're all back. Uh, and of course, metals. And if it's a combination of, you know, being the, in the same bucket as PSU and also metal metals, they're even, uh, they're doing even better. Mid caps and small caps, uh, last two days, a little bit of underperformance, but uh, both in indices are up. Uh, around 1%, three quarters, 1% in that range. So it's uh, very good going uh, as we head into a market holiday tomorrow. Reema. Uh, we head into a market holiday and important data coming out of Later the United today. States, yeah. right? The March CPI inflation print <clears throat> and the FOMC minutes. So the Indian markets only react on Wednesday when we come back. But just some of the big movers today, many from the PSU basket, particularly oil and gas. So Coal India, BPCL are the top gainers. Kotak Mahindra Bank in the private financials has rallied to 2.5%. ITC, Reliance Industries, uh, that's where some of the gains are centered when it comes to large caps. On the way down, HDFC Bank is sulking for the second day in a row. So a bit of an underperformance there. And Maruti Suzuki and Sipla and HDFC Life. These are three stocks where the losses are inching towards a 2% cut. You know, the most important thing that I'll be watching out for over the next half hour or 45 minutes or so, how the market behaves, given it is both the Nifty and the Nifty Bank weekly options expiry. By virtue of it being a holiday tomorrow, the Nifty weekly options expiry has been brought forward to today. And as a result of which, both these indices will be in focus. And the way the markets are positioned right now, the Nifty is at the higher end of, uh, you know, the range that the option writers have positioned themselves for. So if you just take a look at the 22,700 straddle, typically on weekly options expiry days, the option writers write a call and a put at the same strike price. So the 22,700 put has a premium of close to 26 odd rupees. You have uh, the 22,700 call coming in, another 26 rupees. So a net of 50 rupees is what you pocket if you ride that straddle. And you would be hoping for the market to be in this 22,650 to 22,750 range. Where are we on the Nifty? 22,740. So it will be very crucial to watch out for whether we cross past this and see further short covering or maybe go back to the middle of the range, which is 22,700. All of that depends on two factors. One, the Nifty Bank. The Nifty Bank also is in this range of 48,800, that's the most active put. And on the way up is the 49,000 call. So the 200-point band on the Nifty Bank is extremely crucial. And the other factor is how the IT stocks perform. Because starting midday, we saw a bit of an up move on the IT stocks. All the IT uh, stocks are moving higher ahead of TCS's results on Friday. So if the IT pack continues to hold higher and move further up, then maybe there could be a case for short covering even in the presence of uh, Nifty Bank's underperformance. So those are a couple of factors that will make the next hour of trade important. Okay, so how should you position yourself in the next one hour? We have Mitesh Thakkar joining in with a few closing strategies. Mitesh? Yeah, uh, roughly. See, I've been reading a very long bias around the market saying that, you know, this is a market which is possibly not breaking on its course. Uh, Prashant was talking about immediate levels. I think 
till 22 530 i have kept stop loss like slightly deep till 22 530 525 zone on the spot is being taken out maintain a long bias i'm looking at trading calls in terms of bharat forge i think that's the stock you know which uh, is giving a good reversal so buy raise low as the stop 1150 and look for a target of 1230 here and the other one is bata india reversing from very oversold levels Bata is a buy. Keep a stop below 1360 for targets of 1425. Hmm. Just uh, a couple of more names. Uh, United Spirits, McDowell, if you have any thoughts, back at 1200, <clears throat> Mitesh uh, is doing well, some 6% higher. And in the morning, uh, then we were talking about metals, right? You were saying that uh, you recommended uh, one name, but then you were saying, well, some of the others uh, you exited and then uh, entries have been, entries back have been a little difficult. So just way in there. I mean, Vedanta is up another seven this, uh, today. That's right, Prashant. I started with McDonald's. I think that's given a fresh breakout, you know, about the previous size of 1175, 1176. So I think that keeping, you know, maybe two, three points lower as a stop loss level or uh, even in a pullback, I think, you know, this can be bought. I think 1265, 1270 is the minimum target. I think we are even looking at possibility of higher levels. And yes, metals, I think the problem is that, uh, as you rightly highlighted, a lot of stocks have run away. So we would want to wait for a pullback. If you don't get it, then possibly look at other stocks. Been bullish on interglobe aviation in the past, Mitesh. Uh, do you think one continues that uh, bullish sentiment even after this up move? It's at a fresh record high for that counter? Uh, from the long term charts, I would still maintain a bullish bias. In the short term, now it's getting very close to overbought level. So I think it's uh, uh, very important to tighten your stop loss slightly aggressively. I think currently I would recommend a stop just below levels of 3680. And uh, while the targets, you know, it's met all the extended targets, but uh, we can still, you know, project the the last uh, correction to this, uh, the, the next up move which started from 3450 levels. If you give a, give a re retracement extension, I think you would get targets closer to about 3960 or thereabouts. Maybe around those levels, you will see the stock head towards for the next few days. But if it starts trading below 3680, exit it out because it's extremely over. Okay, Mitesh, do stay on. We want to just get to the latest on the developments from the courts now. First up, Reliance Infra is under pressure after the Supreme Court sets aside an 8,000 crore arbitral award, uh, sorry, award and upholds DMRC's curative plea. To just get the background of this, Ashmit joins in and also to fill us in at what happened in the courts today. Ashmit. Well, this is a huge setback that has come in for our infra. Let's bear in mind that it was in the year 2017 that an arbitration tribunal had held in favor of Reliance Infra and had slapped that arbitral award on DMRC, Delhi Metro uh, Railway Corp. Now, over the years, with the interest component, this arbitral amount has added up to 8,000 crore rupees. Now, what's important is that there were a series of judgments, first by the Delhi High Court, then by the Apex Court, which had upheld it. The DMRC, however, had filed a curative petition before the top court. Uh, and at this curative petition, it was heard in, uh, it was heard in reserve on February 15th. And importantly, uh, the Supreme Court, in that curative application, has held that it had erred. The Supreme Court has turned its judgment around and said that it made a mistake in allowing allowing for that arbitral award, uh, that that arbitral award has slapped a huge uh, liability, a huge burden on Delhi Metro, which is a public utility, that this amounts to a miscarriage of justice, that there is an illegality as that arbitral award is concerned, and with that has struck down that 8,000 crore arbitral award. What that means now is that our infra that was hoping on receipt of this 8,000 crore rupees, that money will not be coming their way. Importantly, the Supreme Court has issued directions that whatever funds may have exchanged hands by the DMRC in this interim period will have to be returned. The execution proceedings in the Delhi High Court will have to get halted. And most importantly, Delhi Metro, as per this latest order of the Apex Court, is now free of that liability of 8,000 crores. Back to you. All right, Ashwin, thanks a lot for that. So that takes that stock uh, lower by about 20%. Uh, we also have Prakash Diwan joining us now on the show. Prakash, uh, looking extremely good for the market. A lot of stocks uh, hitting fresh record highs. I know you've been very bullish on the travel theme. We've been speaking about Indian hotels. This morning we had Lemon Tree Hotels talking about the structural uptrend that we're seeing as well. And now just moments ago, we spoke to Mitesh about Interglobe Aviation. Is there any stock which is untouched in this theme that still has some juice left? Or you'll still go with the ones which have rallied already? Uh, good afternoon, Mangan. So you're right. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's all these stocks in the sector are traveling to newer heights. But remember one thing that what's happened with Indigo, and we, we spoke about this way back at 2200 levels as well, uh, is something where, you know, the leadership 
starts paying for itself you know in terms of uh, in terms of p multiples in terms of ev emitter multiples there could be a pause in interglobe and i do agree with mitesh it's kind of in an overbought position the equilibrium seems to be a bit too high but you know the shortage of planes uh, uh, globally in the summer season is actually going to give them some amazing pricing power unless the regulator steps in and puts a cap on it but the way the number of uh, uh, you know flights the destination that have gone up the new sectors that have been added uh, i i don't see any let up in their profitability improvement that's been happening for the last three quarters so yeah i mean on dips i would definitely look at that. the other name that you could look at and sometime back the management spoke to you guys it uh, you know i'm talking about thomas cook there's a whole change in the way thomas cook is now approaching its business and new verticals that were never there two years back you know when they were struck by the pandemic and it's made this recovery from 40 rupees to wherever it is uh, my sense is that this consolidation will also pave the way for the next leg of growth on 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 you know religious tourism smaller destinations more inbound stuff so or, or, you know there's there's lots that's happening which is still below the surface but it'll start kind of panning out uh, by let's say by end of calendar 24 you'll actually start seeing all that so i would i would definitely look at some of these names but as i said valuation permitting you always want a better risk reward hmm. uh prakash uh, nigel is not here but i'm sure he would have wanted to ask you on vedanta um you know and the up move <laughs> that we're seeing in vedanta 7.5% up today more than 30% since the beginning of the month clsc has now put right. the target price at 390 saying it's a beneficiary of the commodity up cycle your thoughts on vedanta after the up move uh good afternoon reema thanks for uh, getting nigel's piece in uh yeah i i do we spoke about vedanta but you know it's always something uh, where you you it, it checks uh, i mean it takes all the boxes uh you've got the cycle which is favoring copper which is favoring aluminum and even hindustan zinc uh, by virtue of the silver by product is is kind of you know looking so different vedanta is actually firing on all these three cylinders uh copper is something which globally is kind of getting undergoing a very favorable reset and i think uh, if you actually extend that corollary to a business which is more uh, soberly managed and established and doesn't have all these uh, complicated balance complicated balance sheet issues and debt repayment and all i would go ahead and stay away by hindalco hindalco you, you remember when the numbers came up there was a surprise that uh, uh, they spoke about this new capex which they were making in the us uh, on, on on their novelist business but that is something which actually was misinterpreted largely by all of us and then the stock actually took a beating all the way 500 this 20% jump has already happened my sense is the numbers will actually give more conviction uh, in terms of what their growth plans are and with that visibility and transparency coming in you probably see a reset on indalco which is much more stable as compared to vedanta so i mean vedanta is doing its bit but i would i would put money into indalco and not vedanta at this point Mm. <clears throat> you know, there's uh, news at the bottom of the screen. This is a comment from Reliance Infrastructure, a story that we were talking about. Uh, they're saying that th this is the company's uh, side of what the, their version. They say company has not received any money from DMRC uh, and uh, DAMEPL as far as the uh, you know the, the case is concerned. Uh, and they say the court's order in the Delhi Metro case does not impose any liability on the company. So they seem to be seem to be implying that uh, they don't. I mean, there's no inflow. Uh, so we'll exactly have to <clears throat> get to whether there was, this was something which was expected and which will not come now, or uh, and uh, whether this implies no outflow as the company seems to be so suggesting. So one, one the... reading of this was basically that you know they had asked for about eight thousand crores, but mm. which they were you know contesting out here, mm. that it did not come is uh, you know something that it wasn't expected to come in any way. Had it come, then that would have been an additional benefit of eight thousand crores. So. is there any outflow from the company for this no hmm. but the expected 8000 crores that is they were supposed to get is not coming in and uh, that they haven't received the order of course the court orders take some yeah. time for them to receive so which is what explains that the stock hasn't shown any recovery despite this clarification <laughs> no i think uh, 20% still you know uh, it's a, it's one of those names which kind of uh, was has been away from the investment landscape right. of most people at least for the last 10 12 years now Uh, but uh, it had done well you know from the recent lows right. it had actually come up quite a, uh, quite a bit i'd heard a word or two recently about uh, you know looking at this as something which perhaps might be uh, fairly recently so this is a bit of a uh, this is of course a setback because i'm not sure uh, people who were looking at this closely were they kind of penciling some of this hmm. in 
and that's not going to happen now uh, and uh, that uh, seems to be the implication but we'll try and have some a representative come and talk to us about this uh, from the company uh, itself now mutual fund flow data also came through right and uh, so this is of course uh, for the month of march we've seen outflows in the small cap category this is the uh, sort of first time we've seen that uh, in uh, i think uh, almost 30 months or so actually surabhi is jo now joining in uh, with highlights on what this means sip flow data just came in and that of course is 19000 crore something i mean at an all time high but overall uh, what does the data tell us surabhi over to you well, we've got uh, the mutual fund data for the last month of the fiscal year, and it's given us a big headline because that tilt away from mid caps and small caps towards large caps that the industry was really pushing for that finally seems to be happening going by the March numbers. I'll give you the big headline. I mean, let's, let's talk about the overall number later, but the big headline is that in March, we have seen the highest inflow in large cap funds that has come through, uh, and that inflow is over 2,000 crores versus what was a trickle in, in February, about 900 odd crores. So a big inflow in large cap funds, and that has happened at the expense of mid and small cap funds. In fact, the small cap category has seen an outflow, an outflow of just under 100 crores, about 93, 94 crores. But it's the first time that this category has seen an outflow in fiscal year uh, FY24. Remember, small cap funds were pulling in 3,000 crores, in fact, in excess of 3,000 crores in the middle of the year, but the narrative was constantly changing, and the impact of the stress test, as well as all the talk that we heard in March about a possible froth in the market, coupled with the correction that the mid-cap market was seeing, that resulted in outflows coming through, and therefore that negative number on the small cap side. Uh, if I talk about even uh, mid-cap flows, then the inflows have come in, they've moderated quite a bit because the inflow is coming at about 1,000 crores, 1,018 versus 1,800 crores in the previous month. That's the month of February and even lower compared to January. So basically, that's the first headline, flows coming down from mid-caps and small caps moving into large caps. Uh, the second interesting trend is that the ELSS category, that's of course picked up, which is typically the trend that we see at the end of the year. Strong ELSS flows coming in about uh, 1,800 crores, just a shade below 1800 crores coming through. Uh, ETF inflows are also very, very solid at 10,560 crores. That also is typically a year-end uh, phenomena because we have a lot of money coming in from the EPFO uh, into, the EP, in, into the ETF route, and that typically is responsible for large, large numbers on the ETF side as we look at the end of the year. The interesting aspect is the shift away from uh, hybrid funds to an extent. The hybrid category has been the big category that the, the MF industry pushed in all of FI24 because that's where the tax advantage kicked in once it was taken away from debt mutual funds. So overall flows have, were very, very strong for hybrids, but in March that number has petered down to just around 5,580 odd, odd crores. Last but not the least, the NFO party that also is sort of tempered to an extent uh, because from a very high number of over 11, 7,400 crores. This is, I'm talking about all of the open-ended NFOs put together. The numbers have cooled off to closer to 3,800, 3,900 crores in the month gone by. So those are the trends. The overall inflow, uh, the net equity inflow number is also lower than March at 22,691. So a bit of a sobering effect coming in, largely because of the mid-cap and small-cap category. Okay, well, uh, Surabhi, thanks very much uh, for that. That's uh, the MF flow. Well, let's just uh, get right back and talk about uh, individual stocks, right? We actually had an interesting management with us in the morning. This is Vietek Vabag. We had Mr. Rajiv Mittal, MD and CEO of the company. I uh, just want to play a, sound, a small sound bite. And uh, it's an interesting, of course, Vietek Vabag is one of the um, many companies which investors are betting on based on, uh, you know, water, which is going to be a big issue and. Uh, and, and, and what can be done to solve that, uh, solve for that problem. But, uh, and I'll ask Prakash for a comment, but just listen in uh, to some of what he's uh, told us. Salination. That is one solution, at least for all the coastal cities. India has a vast coastline, about 7,500 kilometers. Why can't we set desalination plants when Chennai has demonstrated this viability, economic, uh, it is and is affordable and it's reliable because it's drought proof. See, it's uh, tw more than 12,000 crores and a substantial part what we are discussing today is desal and water reuse. You see, last three, four years, we have been always cash positive. So those days are gone. There was a change of shift of strategy. Our uh, selection of projects was all about the payment security. If you see 98% of our order book is today based on multilaterally funded projects, 
uh, central government funded where we have a sovereign guarantee and for international projects we have a letter of credit so those days are gone i think if you see in the last four years i think we are back on cash positive we generate free cash and uh, this is the way we want to grow in future also our targets are firm and we don't have a year when we want to achieve it so we want to do it earlier than later Okay, that's a very uh, confident, positive-sounding management at VA Tech Babag. Uh, 12,000 crore order book, 98% uh, of the projects uh, which they do, the work that they select are based on uh, sort of multilateral funding, uh, central government guarantees. So the problem earlier, problem of working with local municipalities, etc., and cash not coming, that is no longer an uh, issue. Uh, by the way, I, it was not, he did not uh, sort of mention the number. I asked him a question about that old billion-dollar euro a billion euro uh, revenue target. This was a target which uh, they laid out a year, about a year ago, about 10 years ago, sorry, 2012, 2013. Uh, but he kind of reaffirmed it, of course, not giving any timeline, etc. They did 3,000 crores in revenues in F523. Stock's done very well. Prakash, uh, I mean, the story is great and, you know, orders will not be a problem, etc. Uh, but uh, is, it, is it juiced out or you think it's, it's a good long-term bet? Uh, from within the conversation that you had with uh, the management and your comments, let me just pick up a couple of points and uh, answer your question specifically, Prashant. This company uh, was the one of those rare occasions where a domestic uh, uh, entity actually bought out of MNC parent, right? And that's when they went out and said, we'll do this uh, million euro kind of a work. Their growth in the Middle East uh, parts of Europe has been very good. There's absolutely no doubt. They got hit by all the working capital getting locked into. So if you look at the 23 March numbers, the profit numbers, it's just barely a couple of crores. And, and that is something which disappointed everybody. So whoever invested in the company actually started exiting when they saw there's nothing much happening there. But the quality of projects that they've executed, and recently they did a analyst meet, I believe, uh, took people out to see the units, the, the practically see the plans and all. People have come back very impressed with the execution uh, skills also. So my sense is that it's, you know, uh, Wabak uh, 2.0 is a very different animal as compared to what it used to be earlier. And if they are, don't have a problem with getting the money back, or what they, there's no dearth of orders. And this order book could swell. Their conversion could happen very fast. And and given what's happened in Bangalore and all of that, I think water is going to be uh, in terms of a in terms of a focus area. It's going to be a priority on spend as well as much as you know, roads and sewage and all of that. So uh, I'm, I'm sure there's enough business. And it's not, you know, if you look at the five-year history, it's done about 150% uh, in five years. So it's not really gone off the hook in that sense. So there's still enough uh, juice there uh, to answer your question. It's just that uh, you should be comfortable buying into something which looks expensive because of the trailing P being very, very uh, low. But uh, uh, trailing P being very expensive because of the EPS being low. But if things look up after March, I think it, it deserves a relook of sorts in a very favorable way. Mm. Any thoughts on Kolte Patel? Um, you know, it's a small Pune-based real estate company, but they're spreading their wings. Um, you know, so it's up close to about 7%, pretty good volumes. It's doubled in the last one year. So stock is seeing traction. Fundamentally, have you analyzed Kolte Patel's prospects? Unfortunately, not, uh, Prima. And, and I, I mean, when I looked at it was years back, uh, what's happening is that every real estate play is uh, is now uh, smartly enough focusing on while they've strengthened the balance sheet given you know the new environment with RERA and all of that. Uh, they've started focusing on execution, which is very very decisively uh, you know within a reasonable timeline. And nobody is coming up with projects which go into five six years. They want things to be turned around in 24, 30 months, and and that's what's happened. Whether it's a talk in Delhi. Uh, they managed to do 1,200 crores of sales in Kalasha, which was a you know project launched just recently. So you know that's that's where things work out in favor of most of these real realtors. I would I would definitely look at uh, some of these Pune and the birth base you know, you know place because these are markets which are growing, micro markets which are growing very rapidly in terms of not just demand but the realization levels are also kind of racing up, uh, which which doesn't probably happen in a Mumbai or a Chennai or a Bangalore. So definitely. You could look at some of these, but I haven't specifically seen numbers in recent times or full departed. All right, uh, Prakash, thank you so much for joining in. Always a pleasure speaking with you. Have a good holiday tomorrow and thereafter the entire weekend for you. Uh, meanwhile, just keep an eye out on a couple of these chemical stocks. It's they, They've been on fire since uh, 
you know, uh, today's midday somewhere where we saw a big move. So, Bodal Chemicals, for instance, up at the high point, Jubilant in Grevia up around 11.5%. And this is in addition to the regular Tata Chem, Ami Organics, Atul, all of them that we're seeing big gains on already. So, let's keep an eye out on that pack. Something, uh, you know, uh, we, we've heard from a lot of the chemical companies uh, in the past here on our channel itself saying that the worst is perhaps behind uh, the chemicals industry. And usually these, all, uh, these stocks move in tandem and that's what we're witnessing in a lot of these names. Take a short break. On the other side, we'll get Prashupati, Prashupati Adwani of Global Foray on the other side to speak about the market. Welcome back. You're watching Closing Bell. Commodity prices and a whole host of them, whether it's gold, silver, cocoa, they're all hitting new records every single day, day after day. Manisha joins in to tell us more about this present commodity boom that we're seeing. Manisha. Well, thank you so much for that. Uh, everything in commodities actually seems to be doing quite well. Energy is the only place where we have seen some profit taking come in today. But that also seems to be inching up on your screens right now. But apart from that, whether it's about precious metals and industrial metals and soft commodities as well, many of these prices continue to run up on the higher side. Take a look at gold prices. And we are trading at around uh, uh, $2,360 an ounce in the international markets there. That's an all-time high. Silver at 28.19 on your screen is a three-year highs. But for the Indian markets, gold and silver both are trading at an all-time highs. It has been one-way rally in the last uh, 16 or 17 days that we've seen into this space. Well, valuations are higher, as Chirag was pointing out, and perhaps it's overheated as well, but the momentum still on the higher side. Come on to industrial commodities, industrial metals, that is. And here as well, everything seems to be trading at a multi-month highs. Zinc, I'll start with that, is trading at a one-year highs. Elumi copper, while it's trading at a 14-month highs, the Chinese copper prices are trading at an all-time highs. Markets are anticipating, one, they are reacting to, of course, the stronger data that we've seen. Manufacturing activity across the globe seems to be picking up. And there are expectations of China coming out with further stimulus measures in sense of property sector that has been supportive. Moving on, when you look at platinum prices, that's trading at a four-month highs. Tin is trading at a 15-month highs. Aluminum prices at a 13-month highs. And this can go on because many of these metal prices are doing quite well. Even iron ore prices from its 10-month lows have moved into two-week highs as we trade right now. Soft commodities also have been doing quite well. Cocoa prices, for one, have been trading uh, at around all-time highs at $10,000 a ton. I mean, cocoa prices have gained up by 150% in this year alone. Rubber prices trading at a three-week highs. Coffee prices at an 18-month highs. And I can go on with the list, but most of the fundamentals do look strong. There are supply disruption concerns. And with demand picking up, these are the prices doing quite well on your screens. They are. Uh, coffee at an 18-month high, cocoa at a record high. So there goes our consumption of both coffee and chocolate, Manisha. But you're speaking about gold and silver, all of that as well. So maybe the money we save on coffee and chocolate goes into gold and silver. In fact, we spoke with Max Layton of City earlier to get his outlook on the rising commodity prices. Specifically, he mentioned about gold and silver as well. Let's listen to him. We're on the bandwagon with gold. Uh, I, I think... You only have to go back to the second half of 2007 and look at the that Fed cutting cycle when it cut from 5 to 2% and how gold and silver performed during that period. Um, and you know we're expecting something of a rerun of that over the next 6 to 12 months. So we've got gold hitting new fresh all-time highs, 2300 an ounce, and we've got silver, you know, even, you know, on a 6 12 month view outperforming gold. Silver doesn't just have the Fed cutting cycle on its side. Silver's also got very strong demand from solar and from EVs coming, you know, led by China, but also globally. So we've got silver getting up to $30 an ounce uh, over the next six to 12 months. We turn to tactically bullish copper targeting 8,800 and, and potentially 9K at the end of last year in early December. And, um, you know, now we're up at 88, 9K. We had a big decision to make. Um, you know, is copper going to pull back on a rising debt service burden on a weakening global growth outlook over the next six, 12 months? Or is it going to continue to kind of grind higher, you know, with the range shifting up over time due to underlying deficits and supply issues like, like those that we're seeing um, in China with the potential smelter cuts in the next couple of days and over the next few months? You know, we're strongly recommending investors have a position in copper and we're strongly recommending that consumers of copper hedge their exposure 
over the next one to three years. I mean, it's on a path to 12,000. There's so many different ways to get there over the next two years, um, but but that's where it's headed. Okay, well, <clears throat> you know, uh, the, the targets are uh, 10,000 uh, by $10,000 by, uh, I think, the uh, end of uh, this particular quarter, by the end of this year, and $12,000 uh, then over the subsequent two years or so. So they're expecting a pretty strong run for copper prices uh, from here out. That's city uh, and uh, city's view. Pashupati Advani of Global Foray is now joining us. Uh, Pashupati, good afternoon. Good to have you with us here, uh, as always. Uh, would, I mean, again, we just start with commodities because that's where the uh, bulk of the momentum is. And you just heard uh, this is a global view on copper. Uh, and you got, But you've got some plays here in India if you want to do that. Uh, you know, of course, Hindustan copper is perhaps the only pure play, uh, but you've got uh, Vedanta and uh, maybe a few others on the refining side. Uh, any thoughts at all on what's, what we're seeing on the commodities uh, side? Pashupati. Yeah, I, I've actually been very comfortable with commodities also because you're, you're using commodities for all the infrastructure that the government is paying for. So it's the, it's the raw material. And today you're seeing it with the Vedanta, which is, it's, commodities but it's also got oil in it and it's also got um, you know ore in it and so it's it's lots of things in it so it's jumped but i but i honestly feel that you know the commodity cycle is coming back what i am seeing is protectionism from a lot of countries and also disruption of supply chain uh, also because the suez is also mixed messed up so i think that's having the effect of uh, you know not sort of making people sort of uh, go into the commodity cycle because each country is going to be short and so it's whatever you can't produce within if you have to go out. And most countries are wanting to hold on to their supply. So that's what I'm seeing, Prashant. So if you had to buy a commodity play, which one would you recommend? Well, better late than never, you might as well go for Vedanta, right? Because that's the index, big, big commodity. And it's in all the big commodities. I mean, it's in iron ore, it's in oil, it's in uh, copper, it's in, you know, zinc. So it's in all the big commodities which are going to be used. And all of them have important industrial uses also. And as we continue to grow industrially, uh, we're going to need all these commodities. So they are um, actually very well poised to be able to take care of that demand. So do you have Vedanta in your portfolio right now, Pashupati? And are you comfortable buying it even at these levels? Because the stock has gone up. Yeah, one has to. Unfortunately, you know, the, um, my my TV interview this week was rescheduled from last week. And in the, in the interim, the market's gone up every single day. So, uh, um, yes, it would have been nice to have bought it <laughs> last week. But uh, I guess if you're in this wave that things are going to continue and things are that, you know, we are the, 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 the fruit of the month or the country of the month, then definitely uh, we need to uh, buy Vedanta. And even if you're having to buy it, uh, you know, 20% higher, so be it. I mean, mm. you're buying it in respect to the market. The market said it's all-time highs, right? So, you know, um, I, hope, I guess you have to buy it. I hope you bought it and now the viewers will also, uh, you know, hear uh, your your uh, insights on this space. Never right? enough. Sense. Never enough. I never have enough. Small <laughs> holding, never enough. Never enough. So, so if, if you I were mean, to just, say... Just to, just to rewind, mm -hmm. about three months, six months ago, Vedanta overseas was looking like defaulting. They didn't look like they were going to yeah. pay their bonds. And look from there, and the stock here was around 200, 220, if I recollect. So, I mean, you know, we're, we're sea change in probably less than two, two, two quarters, three quarters. So, I mean, look at what we've got here. Fantastic. Totally. Well, yeah, either the news is good or the price. Uh, uh, Pashupati, you know, if you were to come back next week and you would have regretted not coming today because something would have gone up 20, 25%, what would it be? Would it still be metals or are you looking at chemicals or some other spaces as well? See, the chemicals, I've always been a little wary of because I, I don't know what's actually going on in, in China, and China is actually driving chemical prices. I do feel that um, oil is going to go up. Um, we're hovering with Brent around 90 bucks, $90 a uh, barrel. I think that could quite easily go up by 5 to $7, which will be very good for our oil-producing companies like ONGC, Oil India. Um, and uh, obviously, Reliance and, uh, you know, so th th those are the three that, that benefit the most from higher oil prices. So I think, I think oh. that, uh, you know, um, I'm more aligned to that I feel that oil, oil is actually what's going to hurt India with high prices. But I think that the companies that are in oil are the ones which are definitely to be bought. And I think you'll also get high dividend if they're government companies. All right. So, so you basically don't exactly know what's going on in China with the prices. But... Uh... 
you probably uh, would like to listen into what Sonal has to say. She's got a handle on what's taking place in the chemical space right now. Sonal, all the stocks are on fire. They are, and there is a possibility, or at least the opinion is, that maybe the worst is over in terms of destocking and pricing pressure for chemical names as well. If you just take a look at some of these names, SRF, it is it is at a fresh 52-week high. The likes of Arkin Chemicals, which is a commodity chemical name, this clean science and technology, Jubilin and Grevia, again, it has been an underperformer for a while. Today, it's up around 12 odd percent. We also have the likes of Tara Chemicals, Ami Organics, all of them up and about. Ami Organics and fundraise plans there as well. Now, we spoke to a couple of chemical companies companies over the last couple of weeks and the commentary has been quite positive. For instance, Viniti Organics told us back in March that FY25 will be 20 to 25% better than FY24 and they think that the worst is over in terms of destocking for the chemicals industry. Not only that, we got a global opinion as well, Lubrizol Corporation, the global CEO spoke to us and said that destocking in the global chemicals industry is behind us and we are starting to see demand and supply uh, balancing in the industry as well. Additionally, we've gotten some news data which suggests that prices are seeing an uptick as well. Uh, soda ash prices, the Chinese soda ash prices, they are at a fresh record high. Uh, the highest in two months, sorry, and they are up more than 4% today. Of course, that does not directly impact Indian soda ash prices or Tara chemicals because they usually follow suit. There has been no change there, but it could be a precursor there as well. We've also gotten exports data for the month of March. For some, it is still down, but for some, it has seen a massive improvement on a month-on-month -month basis. For SRF, both the... Uh, Indicators suggest it's down the month-on-month -month and on a YY basis. But Naveen Fluorine has seen a big uptick on a month-on-month -month basis led by their CDMO business. PI Industries continues to see a downtick both month-on-month -month and on a YY basis. RT Industries has seen a substantial uptick. Atul Limited is in the same uh, line where the uptick is uh, higher on a month-on-month -month basis. Viniti Organics again is seeing higher exports coming by on a month-on-month -month basis. Uh, but PI Industries' main product has seen a decline in exports. That is important to remember. Despite this rally, uh, valuations are still at elevated levels. So just take a look at that. The table will come up for you on the screen. Motilal Oswal in a recent note suggested that the situation is going to improve only in the first half of calendar year 24, but the valuations, they continue to remain a concern anywhere between 28 times to as high as 60 times for some of the names. Thank you very much for that. By the way, markets have gone ahead and hit yep. a fresh high. So they've taken out the high that we hit yesterday. And unlike yesterday's trading session, when markets hit highs early in the morning and then they cooled off, particularly towards the end, to close flat, today the gains are coming in in the last 30 minutes. Remember, it's also the weekly expiry today. Nifty Bank and even the overall Nifty weekly expiry, that's been preponed from, uh, you know, preponed from tomorrow. Uh, because tomorrow is a holiday, so that could be adding to the up move. But now you are seeing buying. State Bank of India, ITC has moved to the day's high, and a lot of individual banking names. So pull up the intraday chart of something like a federal bank um, uh, that's higher in trade. You also have you know strength coming in. I think in Yuko Bank across the board in Midcap Banks across the board. And you know, Rima, uh, like we pointed out, uh, once the Nifty was comfortably above that 27, 22,750 mark. All the shorts had to cover their positions, close out their positions that they were sitting in losses for. And the Nifty Bank as well was facing resistance at the 49,000 mark. And once it's crossed past that, uh, the next 40, 50 point up move has come by swiftly itself. And most of them has happened three after 3 p.m. And uh, this is also ahead of the U.S. inflation data that comes in today. Yeah. So um, the market's going long into that. No, it looks like it. And, uh, you know, talking about banks, Kotak actually is the one. If you can pull up the intraday, hmm. you'll, you'll see... Uh, 15 index points coming in from there, and the other one is SBI. Uh, it's, uh, you know, the biggest contributor this, uh, today is, uh, is Reliance Industries, but incrementally, I mean, it's not as if it's moved too much after 3 p.m., uh, but it's ITC, Kotak Bank, uh, and SBI, the three names, and the IT names, right? Infosys and TCS, they're also adding about 10 index points each. Uh, TCS numbers, uh, of course, will be watched this week to, uh, you know, which will give us a sense of what's uh, happening there. By the way, Pashupati, any view, I'm sure you have a view, but any strong view, a definitive view on IT services and uh, whether one uh, stands to get, make money buying IT stocks here? Well, uh, on the one hand, you've got a weakening rupee, which is good for IT. But I have personally have been not so bullish on IT simply because I feel that uh, uh, AI is going to take away a lot of jobs from IT. And I think that that's going to hurt our companies unless they're able to move um, 
move the needle in terms of um, you know uh, changing their business model and they all seem to be laying off people this year so i don't know what that means but that means according to me that means the so called volume growth is going down but the markets are obviously seeing it's a big part of the index people are coming into the market so you know uh, when you come in you have to come into everything right so you you know you are coming into it as well so any new money that's coming is coming across the board but uh, it's not my favorite it for sure but uh, enjoy your holiday tomorrow pashupati and uh, we'll speak to you soon again thanks very much for joining us here on cnc Thank you. tv 18 thanks very much we'll take a break we are back with uh, what's happening in dealing room uh, dealing rooms nimesh is going to get us d street chatter uh, and some trading ideas follow after that stay with us Market continues to do well. 100 points on the Nifty at the high point of trade. 500 points on the mid-cap index. Nearly 300 points for the Nifty bank, uh, holding comfortably above 49,000. The Nifty around 22,750 record levels. What are the dealing rooms saying? As always, let's go out, go to our favorite segment, D Street Chatter. Nimesh is waiting by with all the insight. Then Nimesh. Hi, Bangla. Now we're used to record highs, right? And again, now today the good part is uh, it's backed by some some big momentum in the broader market stocks as well. Uh, again, you know, uh, today today there is a bit of change in terms of flows as well. I understand there is a small uh, MOC basket buying largely into mid cap names, and that that probably explains a bit of move in the in the mid cap stocks as well. The mid cap index is up one percent, but a lot of individual stocks are up eight ten percent. So big move in in that space. Uh, the PSUs continue to outperform within the sectors and within the PSUs. uh while while the metal stocks has seen a dream run in this series oems is just a small drop in the crude prices have seen a big reaction to the oems as well in today's market i guess today's rally is also to do a bit of short covering as well uh you know in in many of the sectors and stocks so that is that just explains a bit of moves again you know it's not a very sector specific there are lot of sectors which are buzzing in trade today and and some moves are unexplained as well so like you know the entire uh, for example the chemical names all are buzzing in trade but uh, the expectation of quarter four is going to be quite soft so that's something to track i guess uh, all eyes will be on the tcs numbers on friday but uh, before the tcs numbers we saw big upgrade on uh, infosys yesterday and there is cash based buying as well from larger fias in select technology stocks in today's market so a uh, big move uh, largely in the broader markets but it's backed by fi buying as well that's the broad sense well, that's an interesting one uh, broad based cash based bu uh, cash buying in A lot of these IT names ahead of TCS numbers on Friday. And Mesh, uh, other individual stock tidbits that you picked up? Well, you know uh, the entire real estate stock, uh, real estate space has been buzzing of late, but Anantra has just been consolidating. Uh, uh, but uh, there were multiple block uh, block trades today. I understand the domestic mutual funds were buyer in today's block. Interestingly, I understand uh, th there are multiple uh, you know sell side analysts who are visiting the company for their uh, data center as well. So that's 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 one stock uh, on my radar today. The second name is IEX. uh within the power names this is one stock which is relatively underperformed but looks like some bit of buying seems to be back uh, the, 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 the 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 there is going to be delivery based buying as well is what i understand and it's a it's a pure play on on the on the power deficit uh, which is which is going to last for the next couple of months so iex stands out largely on back of that the third name is vodafone idea it's been uh, the talk of the talk of the town a lot of people are reporting as well uh, the stock is in fno band so the activity has to be in the cash market for the last few days I understand a US based hedge fund is an aggressive buyer in the cash market in Vodafone idea all as will be the FPO which is likely to get filed uh, this week so FPO can open next week but I understand the demand is quite strong in the FPO as well so both institutional investors FIs as well as uh, domestic uh, HNIs are likely to participate in the FPO so that's something to track which will have an impact on industry travel as well so both those stocks will be in focus next week and the last name is HDFC AMC we saw uh, the uh, mutual fund data today but in general at these levels at record highs some bit of profit booking is visible in hdfc amc and there are sell flows from leading fis today in that particular name all right uh, in, in uh, sort of good intel uh, nimesh is always good list thanks very much we'll keep uh, an eye on some of these names uh, that you've highlighted the idea in particular now nimesh had earlier highlighted about protein ego on uh, our segment d street chatter the blog got executed this morning hormos is here with a quick look in on the company itself the business model and what's it uh, all about or must take it away and as the protein ego as you mentioned wasn't news today this morning because of the block deal that got executed 361 managed funds were supposed to be the sellers in that entity around 21.5 lakh shares were sold and uh, now so according uh, so the company basically earlier was known as NSDL e governance infrastructure limited and uh, it was 
one of as per its RHP, it says that it is an IT enabled solutions company that conceptualizes, develops, executes greenfield technology solutions and from its inception until the 30th of June last year. Now, this is part of its RHP. It mentioned that it has implemented and managed 19 projects across seven union ministries and autonomous bodies. Now, some of the ministries that it is engaged with includes the likes of finance ministry, the commerce and industries ministry, education, information and broadcasting, IT, skill development and the communications ministry as well. Now, it has its business divided into three major verticals. Uh, is of the issuance of the PAN number. Now, that is one of its businesses that where it has around 45% market share as per its RHP. The TIN business also has around 58% market share. The Atal Pension Yojana, where it is a sole, it has a monopoly in that segment. It has 100% market share there. And the National Pension Scheme as well, where it conducts business, 94% market share there as well. Now, for the third quarter of FY24, the numbers were slightly on the disappointing side, although the revenue went up by 16% from last year, the company reported an EBITDA loss compared to a profit in the year-on-year -year period and the net profit was also down almost by half. Now, that was because of higher repair and maintenance costs that the company had to undertake. And when it comes to the revenue split, the tax services business contributes to nearly half of the company's business, uh, company's revenue, pension services is 31%, and the identity services, which includes the likes of PAN and others, that constitu constitutes around 14%. Some important stakeholders now, 361 uh, were managed funds were the sellers in this in today's block deal. But apart from th apart from them, NSC has a 20% stake in the company. They were one of the shareholder uh, selling shareholders in the IPO as well. Yet they still have around 20% stake there. Deutsche Bank, Hong Kong, Stan uh, Shanghai Bank, and Standard Chartered also has clo also have close to around 3% stake there each. Indian lenders also have stake in the company, Canara Bank, Bank of Baroda, Union Bank, almost every other Indian uh, private and public sector bank has stake in the company ranging from around 1.5% to 3%. There's been an interesting journey for the stock as well. It is a recent listing. It listed last year an IPO price around 792. So it's around 50% higher from its IPO price. But from the peak that it has set, it's down around 30% from its peak as well. Back to you. Thank you very much uh, for that. Mitesh is back with us for a few BTST calls. Mitesh? Uh, I have two BTST calls uh, on the radar. I think Prashant was just violating Kotak Bank. Uh, disclaimer, it's recommendation to our clients as well. So there is vested interest. But uh, it's, it appears to be giving a good breakout. So buy here with the stop below 1812 for targets of 1850. And ITC as well, I think, you know, is closing and moving towards the days high and closing there. So that's a BTST with the stop at about 434 for targets of 445. Well, uh, <clears throat> thanks very much uh, uh, for that. Uh, Mitesh and uh, you know uh, appreciate you joining in uh, with that we'll take a quick commercial uh, break here we'll come back and uh, we'll take a look at the top corporate voices that we had through the course there is some interesting managements we played out of course that soundbite from VA Tech Vabag but we spoke with Lemon Tree Hotels and a few others so those, those conversations uh, are coming up good news is there is no downshift <clears throat> but uh, you know we have now entered H1 which is typically the, the low season for the hotel industry. Uh, and when I can compare it to the previous year, I don't see anything which is uh, less than last year. There is, I think, a slight pickup in demand. Uh, but overall, as I, I think I've said earlier, there is, I think, uh, going to be a structural shift in demand in India for branded hotel rooms. And elements of that, I think, we already see playing out. And this will continue for the next three to five years in my opinion. If you look 15 years ago or 16 years ago to say Indonesia and a year or two before that to China and then go back to other countries that were roughly at this point of GDP per capita as, as, as is in India, there is a magic number. The magic number was $7,000 per uh, capita, which means roughly $30,000, $35,000 per household. At that point, there was a huge change in demand for branded hotel rooms. If we uh, cumulative this all the plant that we already we are in stainless steel long product where uh, in Indore where we have acquired this Mittal uh, Co-op. So there also we are adding facility for this uh, further uh, uh, further processing to uh, increase our EBITDA margin. So this uh, 25,000 ton uh, facility we are adding for bright parts and 18,000 ton per annum for this wires. 
so if we can if we consider all this though we are expecting uh, 5000 to 6000 cr from this stainless steel so uh, basically margins uh, uh, we can say that uh, once this uh, value addition steel start functioning we will increase this uh, uh, supply chain material by EBITDA margin by 7000 to around 7000 ton per uh, per metric ton uh, 7000 rupees per metric ton additional EBITDA margin we are expecting so uh, we are we are uh, expecting this capital outlay of around 650 to 750 cr for all this Well, five minutes to go for market to close. Uh, Container Corp is up 5%. We're seeing a decent pullback in names like Petronet LNG as well, open slightly flattish and now holding up with a gain of about 5%. MCX continues to do well, but the two stocks uh, that are doing well from the word go today have been Sun TV, which is up 6%. And then there is United Spirits, which too has hit a fresh record high. We have Mayuresh Joshi joining in, head equity researcher, William Neil. Mayuresh, uh, your thoughts on both uh, Sun TV and United Spirits. And this is necessarily to do with the stock and not uh, the way their teams are performing in the IPL. <laughs> Afternoon, Mangala. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so to that extent, I think uh, the expectations in terms of uh, market share gains, uh, specifically in the case of Sun TV, uh, is uh, probably being uh, taken uh, with, with uh, both hands at, as we speak. And therefore, across markets uh, and across languages as we speak, uh, they are gaining market share. Uh, the other element, obviously, has been the OTT platform. Uh, and there again, I think the expectations in terms of losses narrowing down, along with the investments that they're probably doing in terms of the exhibition business uh, producing films, uh, they'll be very, very selective about it. Uh, so to that extent, uh, the expectations in terms of ad revenue growth, uh, which has uh, seen a sharp increase, subscription revenue growth, which is stabilizing, stabilizing across markets, uh, I think that is something which is propelling uh, a lot of investors to believe that earnings uh, should be relatively strong. Uh, so I think that's that's the tailwinds and the momentum for which Sun TV is probably moving, and the momentum can very well continue. For United Spirits, I think the expectations in terms of more premium launches expected to come their way is something that is acting as a clear trigger for the stock. Uh, obviously, input costs uh, had risen a few quarters back. Uh, they have stabilized uh, to a large extent, uh, including glass price prices. And therefore, I think with moderation in input costs, uh, the expectations in terms of better volumes going forward, I think that clearly puts in uh, a better operating leverage uh, as we enter the next few months. I think we should also keep in mind United Prebris, Mangalam, I think, with the heat wave going around, I think the best season for them is uh, the next uh, quarter. Undoubtedly. Uh, Mayuresh, uh, afternoon. Uh, what about speciality chemicals? Do you think uh, you know this quarter's numbers will throw up any opportunity to start accumulating what do your channel checks suggest? Have earnings bottomed out? Is restocking taking place? So, uh, afternoon, Reema. Uh, I think destocking is largely over, is, is what we have understood when we speak to a lot of players within the space. Uh, uh, the second element, obviously, is pricing. Uh, the pricing has still not improved uh, to a large extent. Uh, obviously, I think the commoditized chemicals, the pricing is still under a lot of pressure uh, because of uh, the sheer China factor. But even for specialty chemicals, the niche players itself, but the pricing has not improved significantly because demand still looks a little bit sluggish. Uh, so to that extent, you're absolutely right. Uh, Q4 numbers might be a little bit on the weaker and the softer side. Uh, and in fact, that might also get uh, pulled over into Q1 numbers as well. Uh, so a large element in terms of earnings expectations might only happen post Q1, where I think a large element in terms of restocking expected to take place the expectations in terms of demand coming back in a calibrated manner, which will mean that the second half earnings will be relatively better compared to what we probably see than language over the last year or two. So still expecting weak set of numbers across the pack. I think a couple of companies, two, three companies might perform exceptionally well, contrary to market expectations. But again, I think post Q4, rather post Q1 numbers, I think, uh, that is the time probably to look at these companies. I think a lot of these companies, their EPS, RS ratings, uh, the institutional holding as we see it in Cancelim still remains very, very poor. So I think we will wait our time out, uh, wait out for Q4 numbers, watch out for commentaries, probably take a call post Q4 numbers. Mm. <clears throat> it's rare to find a sector which is uh, not done well, right? So in chemicals, is <laughs> it, it, it's that. It'll, uh, so yeah, a lot of uh, interest there waiting. 
uh, the waiting game. Of course, today we are seeing uh, pop. Uh, Indigo is, of course, uh, doing is done very well from 2,000 to nearly 4,000 now, 3,800 in a, in a what 15 months time, uh, Mayuresh. Uh, is the, is the Indigo? Of course, there's only one Indigo, but uh, again. The, the, prop, the thing is to try and buy things ar around that theme. If the theme of travel, tourism, etc., stays very strong, what about something like a GMR airports? Not that it has not done well, from 45 uh, kind of levels to what has gotten up to, but this year so far flat. You know, if you just run a cursory uh, run through more stocks which done well in 2023 and what they've done in 24, they're all up 25 percent. Uh, so it's kind of hard to find things which is which are not already up at least 20 percent this year. GMR is one of them. Uh, again, off that theme of travel, uh, any thoughts there, Mayuresh? Yeah, so Prashant, I think we are still trying to scratch our heads around on what to buy. <laughs> so to that extent, I think uh, if you probably extend this uh, travel theme to hotels, uh, luggage, etc., I think Juniper Hotels is something that we like at Markets Better India. I think the thesis is uh, very simple. I think uh, Q4 numbers should be good, but Q1 numbers will be even better. Uh, obviously, the Hayat franchisee that Juniper Hotels runs through I think that has been growing at a very good pace uh, and they've got the right uh, ingredients in terms of the product mix, premium hotels, uh, mid-priced mid hotels and entry-level hotels as well. So to that extent, I think the margins that they're probably posting, 38 to 40 odd percent, that should continue. Occupancy levels about 75, 76 percent uh, is a given for the industry as a whole. And therefore, the calibrated approach in terms of opening up new properties will mean the CAPEX is probably well planned out. The leverage will not overextend itself on its balance sheet. And therefore, the cash flows should be pretty strong, which gets reflected through our EPS ratings. Uh, uh, so I think we have been extremely picky and choosy out here. I think Juniper Hotels uh, is something that we like. Uh, GMR had done well uh, in the first half uh, of, in the, in the second half of the last uh, calendar year. Uh, but to a certain extent now, I think it's largely getting priced in, in terms of uh, the performance that can go through. Obviously, there is still a lot of juice in terms of more airports which are expected to come in the next few quarters and years, uh, which gives them ample scope. But it also increases a lot of capex and leverage needs onto their balance sheet. And therefore, the adjusted cash flows uh, will still remain weak, adjusting for the capex requirements that might probably happen. So selectively, All hotels right. is still yet to look at. All right. Uh, thank you, Mayuresh, for joining in. Juniper Hotels, they will also have uh, the benefit of lower finance costs starting for the fourth quarter. But uh, we we'll leave you at that. Uh, thank you for joining in. And with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Market for now, as of now. Uh, the Nifty closes closer to the 22,750 mark, which is the higher end of the range for which the street was positioned for the expiry. The Nifty Bank just below that 49,000 mark as well, 48,900. The day belonged to the broader markets with the mid-cap index ending about a percent higher. 20% more stocks advancing than the number of stocks declining. We had about 1225 stocks in the green for about 1,000 stocks in the red on the National Stock Exchange. The top gainers on the Nifty, we had the likes of Coal India, Rubel, UPL, all the chemical stocks. Uh, the metals were uh, the theme of today. Hindalco up around 2.5%. We saw a decent gain on Bharti Airtel as well. On the losing side though, a couple of names like HDFC Life ahead of its uh, monthly data coming in. Sipla, Maruti Suzuki, and Divi Slabs were the ones that saw a bit of profit taking. For the second day running, we saw a decline in HDFC Bank. Uh, some notable broader market gainers included the likes of Vedanta and United Spirits. Okay, the bell is gone. It's a 92-point gain by the close of trade. Uh, the Nifty ending at 22,735. Uh, the Sensex up close to about 300 points. We're going to take your leave. Enjoy your holiday tomorrow. Wishing everyone an Eid Mubarak too. Uh, but stay with us. Markets Forward comes up after this short break.